for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hold on tight, I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. This vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn. Dreamers of the cat soon to be cats we're about to get another cat and yeah the prod podcast is named Freachnitz because the word Freach means heather and I live on the, the side of a hill in the west of Ireland very near Croke Patrick and uh, in County Mayo and um, I just love the look of heather and the colour of it so that's where the name of my podcast comes from so you're all really really welcome here it's been about five weeks I think since I put out a podcast so I'm feeling really rusty and um, so just bear with me and I hope you just enjoy this run through my knitting and um, I also would like to really thank everybody who's left comments on my last video and uh, particularly one person who recently contacted me on Instagram, um, or sorry, on my video on YouTube asking was I okay because I hadn't heard, seen from, heard from me or seen a video in a while so um, really thank you so much for your concern and I'm really well and um, you know there are no problems everything is good just life has been extremely busy in September and uh, it's been all good uh, just a lot going on and really very little time for podcasting or for even I haven't been posting on Instagram either um, but you can find me anyhow uh, on Instagram uh, under Freochnitz as well that's F-R-A-O-C-H-K-N-I-T-S Freoch and um, yeah, so it's really lovely to have you here again. Thank you for all of the returning viewers for coming back and welcome to all the new viewers. I hope you, you find something here that inspires you um, and that uh, you it can accompany you while you're doing while you're knitting in the evening or whatever time of the day. Um, so yeah, it's really, really it's good to be back. Um, I was had been put off, I think, over the last while in putting out a podcast because of the amount of effort and time that goes into it um, and so I've decided to change the format a little bit just to get me moving again because I know that um, I, I really needed something to encourage me to uh, to take the time out and sit down and uh, so what I've done is this week I'm actually going to do a little experiment I'm going to leave out the cultural section I hope that doesn't disappoint all, disappoint, uh, all of you um, and instead I'm just going to do a little bit of a knit and chat at the end which will be hopefully nice and relaxed and I want to talk about my creative process so and that's something that's really come to the fore over the last few weeks when I've been so so busy and I've found that that creative process has really been blocked and I just was really inspired by a podcast that I saw by Katie uh, from the uh, Knitting Green Bean I think Katie Green Bean um, uh, I'll put her details down below and she was talking about her creative process in sketching and drawing and drawing um, uh, cartoons and um, artworks. So yeah, I was inspired by that and I just wanted to talk to you about, 
about that at the end of the podcast. So, um, but for the rest of the, the time, the podcast will take the, the same format that it always has done. So that I'll be talking about my finished objects, my works in progress, any works that I want to do in the future, uh, future uh, plans, and also acquisitions of new yarn, uh, or new acquisitions of any sort. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say to you as well is that I have decided to set up a uh, account an account for donations um, because the podcast takes a lot of time to put together as you'd appreciate and also um, I I end up spending um, on royalties for uh, for music because because I've chosen music that I really really love and um, and it, rightly it is it is um, not royalty free so the artist hopefully gets some of the um, uh, the cost of, uh, of that music, of my subscription to Epidemic Sound. So I subscribe to ep epidemicsound.com and I have beautiful music from a guy whose name is uh, Cody Francis. Um, that's the music that you'll hear at the beginning and sometimes at the end of my podcast. So enough about that, just by way of saying to bring, bring you back around to the point I'm making is that I've decided to set up uh, Kofi or Kofi or however you pronounce it, or Kofi account so if you do feel like it you don't absolutely don't have to um, but if you do feel like it and you feel like you, you'd like to buy me a coffee um, for the content that I put out roughly every month uh, on knitting and all my knitting plans um, then I'd be thrilled uh, and be very very grateful. Okay so I suppose we can dive into um, the knitting then and um, I'm also going to do a section on um, a review of all the socks that I've knit over the past, so say from this year, from January this year, and um, I am um, I'm going to be talking about some of those that are recent finished objects. So I'll be talking; they'll come up twice, but I'm just going to put them in context of my um, progression from uh, somebody who wasn't a sock knitter at the very beginning of this year to somebody who is really enjoying sock knitting and finding it actually very therapeutic, especially when my mind has been so full of other things during September, they've become a real go-to project for me that isn't too overwhelming and isn't too um, uh, difficult to take on or difficult to plan, um, especially when you get to the point in your sock knitting life where you know what type of heel you like, you know whether you like to knit top down or toe up, uh, cuff down or toe up. And yeah, so you just, it becomes like a recipe that you have in your head and you know, you can add whatever you want to them um, and change up the pattern depending on what you see that interests you. So yeah, um, so to begin with the finished objects, well, what I'm wearing today actually you've seen before, this has been finished for a while, this is my Sildotna crop um, by Caitlin Hunter and actually I think um, I finished this a good few months ago now in the summertime but I've only recently and I did wear it on a podcast before but I've only recently started to wear it um, because uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis or well, not every day but I've started to, to wear it to get use out of it and uh, the reason being first of all I hadn't woven in all the ends um, when I showed it to you on that, that time about two podcasts ago I hadn't woven in all the ends and I it was really too warm for the summer so it's a mix of um, merino singles and silk mohair and um, it's just come into its own now in September when the weather is slightly cold but not freezing so it's still a little bit too warm for the likes of uh, Atlopi or any of the heavy really warm jumpers Icelandic wool um, so this is a really toasty but lightweight and also the, what I found brilliant about it is that the sleeves, not having sleeves is great for um, for going into coats and uh, the arms of a coat and um, it's just really comfortable to wear out and about. I found it so so nice to wear and of course I love the look of it. It's really uplifting. Um, it's my heather uh, jumper in the colours that were gifted to me by uh, Life in the Long Grass, Caroline from Life in the Long Grass earlier on this year and more of her yarn is coming up um, in a few minutes. I'll be talking to you about uh, one of my current works in progress which is also from that um, those skeins of yarn that she, she gave to me, me earlier in the year because the Soldotna crop actually takes very little yarn. Um, it, there are four different colours 
and but of each of those colors you probably use less than a skein for for each color so um my my finished objects then um i'll tell you a little bit about so the first one that i want to show to you are these socks so these are socks that i have literally just taken off my feet in preparation for the podcast because i was when I was getting ready for the podcast, I was saying, okay, I've got that there, that there, everything's ready to go, I have my notes. Um, and then I realized, where are the, where's my first finished object? My uh, my sinister cat socks, they're called. Um, and I realized I was wearing them, so I had to take them off. So these are getting tons of wear. Um, they are really, really lovely. They're, they're knit. They, they're designed by uh, a designer called Morna, Marna, sorry, Marna Gilligan, um, and she has a website called On Katin Bjog, um, uh, which means the little cat. So she's obsessed with everything related to cats, which I am also. Um, and in fact, we're we're getting a new cat today. Um, and I, if any of you have been listening to previous podcasts, you'll know that we lost one of our cats recently at the beginning of the summer in June. Uh, our little cat, black cat, Tiger Lily went away and didn't come home again. So I'm hoping that she's living happily in somebody else's house because I think she's that type of cat that could easily be where she is. Uh, and I hope no harm has come to her, but I have to accept that she's gone and cats do that and they're independent and you have to accept that they have their own lives. And that's why I love them. And they're, they're just gorgeous creatures. And anyway, so Tiger Lily has moved out and we're about to have a new cat who's Tiger Lily's sister moving in and that cat is almost exactly the same as Tiger Lily in terms of its colouring. It has a tiny little bit of white under the chin and is completely black and its previous owners gave uh, her the name, it's, it's a girl, gave her the name Batman presumably because of the black. So we'll have Batman and we'll have Gatto um, who is thankfully still with us. So Batman is due to arrive today um, and uh, we're really looking forward to that. But just to say that, I mean, I just love cats and I, I'm uh, the only time I don't really like cats is when they decide to crawl up on top of my knitting, but <laughs> that's all part of it. So God regularly waits until I've sat down with my knitting in the evening and decides to jump up on top of it. But um, oh, it's great to have them. They're such company and they're such gorgeous creatures to watch. They're beautiful. So this is... Uh, and Katin Bjog, the little cat in Irish, is the name of Marna Gilligan's website. She's based in uh, London, I think, or near London in Kent, in, um, where is it, Gravesend in Kent in the UK. Um, but with a name like Gilligan and with a website uh, called On Katin Bjog, uh, must have Irish, um, Irish connections of some sort or other, she isn't Irish herself. So this is a... Uh, really gorgeous uh, fingering weight sock that was knit using uh, yarn that I got in when I was in Wales during the summer. Uh, I got this yarn in Yarn O'Clock in Mould in Wales, North Wales, near where my sister and uh, my brother and sister-in-law live. And um, as you can see, it's uh, it's natural yarn and they, um, the brown is called Snowdonia Sock. So it's a Welsh sock, a Welsh yarn and it's 100% organic Hebridean wool and the colour is Brithdir and I looked this up, Brithdir means um, speckled land and it's close, Tyr is the Irish word for land also So and Brith uh, in Welsh apparently means speckled and it could refer to um, uh, stony soil, so this, the way the soil would have been was speckled with stones um, a speck, so literally meaning the speckled land so there are tons of locations in Wales, uh, lots of little small towns and villages called uh, Brithdir. Um, and that's what the, the name of the colour of this sock is, of this yarn is. So the Snowdonia sock, 100% Hebridean, and it's a natural colour. So I absolutely love the deep, deep dark brown of this. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the green then is also uh, a natural yarn and it is from John, John Arbin Textiles. It's called Exmoor Sock. And Exmoor is a locality in Devon, um, which is where the, the name of this yarn comes from. Very, very well known yarn, absolutely beautiful. And it's a combination of 60% Exmoor Blueface Superwash, 20% Cardale, 10% Zwarbles, and 10% Nylon. Um, so this and the colour 
um, is called, it's a really unusual name for the colour, it's called Odmadod, which is a local dialect, Exmoor dialect term for uh, a snail. Uh, so they've used, for their different shades of their yarns, they've used these local names, which is so beautiful. So we have Odmadod, meaning snail, and we have Brithjir, meaning speckled land. So, and we have these, this stunning design from a, uh, a beautiful designer with Irish connections. So we have all of these uh, different uh, beautiful uh, memories of, of um, Ireland and Wales and England coming together in one pair of socks and they are just adorable. They're so, so warm. They are, um, they're fingering weight, so knit with 2.25 millimeter needles and um, I think I could probably go down a needle size actually, that's the one thing I'm finding and I'll tell you a little bit more about that when I'm doing my little sock review at the end but um, they're my simp they're called the simpler sinister cat socks because actually she has another design which is a bit more complicated but I just loved, I was going through a phase where I wanted to do some colour work but actually I didn't have the energy to do very much so this was six, six lines of colour work or six rows of colour work, six rounds so they're my gorgeous Simpler Sinister sock uh, socks, which I'm going to take off the um, the sock blockers now because actually I want to put them put them back on. I won't put them on now, but I want to put the other finished one of my other finished objects, which is also another pair of socks, and I'm going to put them on the sock blockers so that we can see them properly. So as you can see, September has been. A month of sock knitting for me. Um, and really I found socks so soothing and so I mean this is incredible coming from me where if you look back at my podcast from the beginning of the year I was saying I'm not a sock knitter at all. I, I find them fiddly, I find them annoying <laughs> and here I am at the end of the year now completely converted to sock knitting. And I think it is literally just about choosing the elements of the sock that you like most, excuse me, and memorizing them and it just means then that you can just choose a yarn, choose a pattern, and you know adapt that pattern for your own with for your own heel type that you've chosen that you like that you remember. Remember, so don't have to follow a pattern. And I think that's really for any uh, time when your head is full of a whole lot of things that are going on in your life, and you want to sit down and really relax knitting, but you don't really just want TV knitting. You want something that's I don't know has a little bit of interest to it. Um, I think it's great not to be able to look at a pattern, but to be able to knit something that has a bit of interest, like these socks. So these are uh, called the um, these are called Warm Feet, Warm Heart, and they're by the designer is Mona Maid, I think, um, or Mona Drager, and they are free. This are the um, the design is free on Ravelry, so it's called Warm Feet, Warm Heart. They're absolutely beautiful. So these are knit using a skein of yarn that I picked up that you never saw actually on the podcast uh, as a skein of yarn because it was picked up after I pod asked, after I recorded my last one uh, when I was in Cork and if anybody follows me on Instagram you'll have seen that I was down in Cork at the beginning of September and I was in yarn, uh, what's it called, uh, Vibes and Scribes which is a, sh a yarn shop and a bookshop in Cork City and uh, I was lucky enough to be there and I got a skein of yarn from Hedgehog fibers. So this is the very famous Hedgehog fibers yarn. Um, you can see it's variegated. It's really colourful. There's a lot of neons in there. Um, it's called Phoenix. The name of the colour is Phoenix. And this wool is 90% uh, merino and 10% nylon. So it's got nylon in it, but very little. Um, it's really soft. I just have to say I had so much fun knitting with this. Even though when I after I got it home, I thought that's not really me. I love. I mean, I love these sort of really natural colours, you know, really strong, sort of blocky um, colours as well. And, um, but these, these sort of neon -y, crazy, you know, very crazy variegated yarns aren't really me, but I have to say I've really got into it. I absolutely adore them now. And they're the most comfortable socks to wear. So what's interesting about these is that they are a ribbed sock and, um, so you just rib a two by two rib from the very top all the way down. And because it's not a paid for pattern, I can tell you uh, all the details. This is um, what's called an integrated heel. So this is the first time I've ever done an integrated heel. 
and I found that that was a really easy heel as well. Even easier, say, than a short row heel. Um, even though you do a section of short rows here, uh, when you come onto the sole after you've turned the heel, and you come onto the sole. So um, the integrated heel just consists of uh, increases on every two rib, uh, making it into a three. So you go three by two by two to three by two, uh, all the way along, and um, and then you turn the heel using short rows until you get to just about here at the bottom of the instep, and you knit straight until you get to the toe, which isn't very long for me. I take a size six, um, a size six shoe, so that in UK sizes are thirty nine in European sizes, and. Hi again everyone, um, I um, was just talking to you there about the um, the socks the, that I was that I knit from the Phoenix colorway in the Hedgehog Fibers uh, yarn uh, brand and um, hand dyed yarn. I didn't say actually, there's a couple of things I didn't say about it. Um, this is an Irish based company. So uh, hedgehog fibres are based somewhere down near Cork, I think, and um, I think they're just a fantastic company and they're known worldwide and uh, they create these absolutely unique yarns that are just fantastic fun. And the great thing is that you can get one pair of socks. So these socks, I got one pair uh, out of 100 grams. It's expensive yarn. That, that's one thing about it, it's really expensive to buy. Um, but um, you do get a whole pair of socks out of it, which is and a pair of socks that are just a joy to knit. So you've got all the knitting time, you get all the wearing time. Um, it's got nylon in it, so it's going to last um, in your in your shoes walking around. Um, so yeah, it's it's worth it, and it, they're sort of individual skeins. They're never going to be two the same. Um, and I really really enjoyed knitting with it. I just loved watching all the different colours come out. Um, as I was going along and it was really easy, an easy knit um, and free pattern so what's not to like about the, the pattern warm feet warm hearts. The other thing uh, about it is that I had 25 grams roughly, 24 grams left over. Now I take a size 6 shoe, so it's a size 6 foot, that's a UK size and in European sizes 39, I take a 39. And um, yeah, so I um, it's I don't have very big feet, so obviously if you had bigger feet, you're going to get less, and you might end up using the whole hundred grams. But there's plenty left over. You know, you're def definitely going to get a whole uh, a, sock, a pair of socks out of out of hundred grams. So what I'm doing with my twenty four grams left over yarn is I am putting it towards a, a yarn advent that I'm making. Um, that a friend of mine, a lovely friend who I met in the Netherlands last December. Um, suggested that we sw do a yarn swap and um, of a, a yarn advent um, because the idea of opening all these little packages every day in a yarn advent calendar is so enticing but actually they cost an awful lot of money which is right because they take a lot of work from the yarn dyers to put together but it's something that I could never really justify spending I think that much money on or I never really felt comfortable doing it but the idea of actually sharing a uh, of of um, giving away yet leftover yarn that you already have and that you, you may not use yourself, and um, the fun of doing that, of putting that together for somebody else, is just a really good idea. So I think you know if you're into it, why not go for it? And uh, I think we're going to be posting ours probably at the beginning of November. So there's still a month left to put one together if you can rummage through all your uh, your leftovers and think about doing that for somebody who is as much into knitting as you are, or into the fibre arts of whatever kind, whether it's crochet or knitting. Um, yeah, so that's what's going to happen to the leftovers of this yarn. So, um, and I have um, gathered together um, leftovers from the beginning of the year, so I've been working at this, thinking about this for about, I'd say, seven or eight months now. Um, really looking forward to putting them together. So that's those socks. Um, and the last finished object that I have to show you today is a hat. So this was me in in September. I was knitting um, hats and socks and also trying to finish a long-term work in progress which I'll tell you about in a couple of moments. So this hat is um, 
uh, called the Hecate hat and it's designed by Woolly Wormhead who's a UK, um, or she's from the UK, she may be living in Italy I think with her uh, now husband, I think they got married a couple of years ago um, and uh, Italian and um, they have a beautiful son and she designs these um, fabulous hats, I think she has an engineering background so she has a fantastic way of coming up with what look like really complicated designs but when you knit them when you read the pattern, it's really straightforward. Um, so she has a sort of a spiral of this uh, motif going around the hat and ending at the crown. Uh, I'm going to uh, try it on for you there. Even though this is a little bit tight because I haven't blocked it, so it looks a little bit like a swimming hat type of 1920s type of style. But I'm going to rock it anyway, going to go with it. And um, this is the Hecate hat by Woolly Wormhead. And, um, it's a hat that I absolutely adore. It is so warm and toasty and cosy. Um, I'm going to block it using a balloon, so I'm going to wet it and stretch it over a balloon. I really just haven't had the time to get around to doing that. But I mean, even the way it is now, I think I could easily, uh, I could easily wear it. So um, yeah, so it is knit with the leftovers from this particular um, this jumper, the Saldana crop. So if I take it off, you can see. The, uh, the halcyon in the purple was actually used for the main body of this and you can just about see it behind the pink fuzz of the uh, mohair. So this was silk mohair uh, tussock from Pearl Soho that I had left over and um, it's paired with halcyon from Life in the Long Grass uh, merino singles. And the white then is called Crush, also merino singles, uh, Life in the Long Grass and that's the pink here, um, a whitey pink. And um, this halcyon was, I think I had about 18 grams of it left. And um, I was thinking of keeping it for the iron advent, but then I thought um, I really wanted to use it for this hat. Um, <laughs> so I had a bit of a mental struggle. What do I do? Do I keep it to give it away or do I use it? And it was just the particular um, mood that took me that I just thought this would be a perfect yarn for this for this hat and I have plenty of the crush and the hearts left over that's going into my yarn advent um, so that's revealing a lot now don't want to be giving away any more secrets about the about the advent that's going to to my friend who I know watches this podcast but um, anyhow so it'll still be a surprise when when, it, when it, it's opened up on some day in, in advent in December but anyway, this is a, uh, so I used the 18 grams of, uh, of the Halcyon and I moved on to, this is called Hearts, this orange colour, but I had enough of the crush to keep the framework going. And I, I decided I'd not go out and buy another, another skein of Halcyon, that I'd use a different colour because of where it stopped. So it stopped right just below the level of the crown. So this feels like a little skull cap in a different colour. To, at the top of the hat to the body of the hat and you can hardly see the orange section when I'm wearing it. So that is the Hecate uh, and it's so warm and toasty and just just beautiful vibrant colours from Life in the Long Grass as usual. My favourite yarn I think of all time. So that's my third finished object and um, I'll put those here to one side while I talk to you about my works in progress. So. This work in progress you're all going to recognise and you'll be wondering why I haven't finished it yet and I'm wondering the same thing myself but this is the um, the Decision Cardigan by Anka Strip. Everything is falling around here, sorry. So this is the Decision Cardigan and it is by Anka Strick, and you'll be glad to see that I have actually finished knitting the whole thing in terms of the sleeves. The last time I spoke to you the sleeves weren't finished. I was only about a third of the way down the right sleeve and so I'm all the way down at the bottom of the right and have knit the full entire left sleeve since I last saw you. This is what I was knitting when I was on my holidays or my little weekend break down in Cork. Um, so it is the most beautiful autumnal colour. Um, it's uh, De Rerum Natura Ulisse, Erable is the colourway and the pattern is by Anka Strick and it's called the Decision Cardigan. And there are optional, and um, there's an optional zip and a collar, which I absolutely want to do. It's one of the reasons I chose the pattern in the first place. Um, so what I have left to do now, I have left the, um, 
I haven't bound off any of the hems, so the hem of the main body or the hems of the cuffs, um, I haven't bound them off because I wanted to I wanted to just be awake when I was doing it and to be honest most of the time I've been knitting in September I have been half asleep because <laughs> I've just been so tired after uh, busy working days and a lot happening so I'm just waiting till a time when I really feel in the mood for getting this right because I want the hem to be absolutely flat I had started it ages ago I started it and I was getting a wavy hem so I want to do an Italian sewn bind off which is going to take a bit of time um, but there has been so much time and so many hours put into this project that I really want to get it right. And the other thing that I'm really looking forward to doing is the, um, the collar and the the collar and the zip. But one thing I wasn't happy about was that this is the amount of yarn that I have left over. Look at these beautiful colours. So this is the yarn um, after buying the recommended yarn amount. Now I know I do have I am a loose knitter, so it's probably to do with the fact that I just knit the thing a little bit more loosely than was, uh, you know, was done by the test knitter. So I'm going to have to buy more, definitely, of the Arabla, the Ulysse Arabla. I need, I'm not going to get the collar out of that, I don't think. Um, and the Ito Sensai, I think I may get the collar out of that because actually there's an awful lot there. There's, there's more than, there's a lot in, in, in the in the silk mohair so I think that's okay but I'm gonna to have to buy one ball of this which is so frustrating and I was online recently and I nearly bought a ball with a whole lot of other this is what happens I'll buy a whole lot of other yarn because I won't want to waste the the shipping on just one ball of yarn anyway I'll do that that'll happen but it just hasn't happened because I haven't decided where I'm buying it from and then uh, I also have to buy a zipper and I don't even know where to start with that so so there's a couple of things that I mentally have to get over to get to start moving this pro project along to its very last phase. Um, and the pattern recommends that you actually block the whole the whole sweater has to be has to be washed and blocked. That's another thing that's putting me off because it has rained incessantly for this month. Uh, we just seem to be having so much rain in um, this year. The summer rained constantly. September has been very wet again and I'm waiting for a time when it's dry enough to be able to put this out but it's never going to happen. Not until next year. So, um, But I'll have to dry it indoors so I just have to find a time when I am happy to do that and happy to look at a jumper taking up a whole bedroom space or taking up the whole living space. Um, but that is what I have to do. Oh yeah, the reason that I was going to tell you that you have to block it before you start putting the zip in is she recommends that you block it and then you uh, knit the the collar to match the length of the zip that you get so you don't have to cut a zip or anything like that so you're actually just uh, yeah you're knitting you're controlling the length of the the zip uh, by knitting the collar last and after you've blocked the so they always recommend to block uh, a garment before you put a zip in otherwise you'll get puckering so that's the that's where we're at with the decision cardigan so i thought it was worth showing it to you again i mean it really is just a stunning piece and i'm really looking forward to finishing it but it is going to have to wait until i have a bit more headspace uh, and until i get around to buying another ball of yarn online and i buy a zip uh, and i block it and yeah there's a few things there oh i have to do the, the, the hems as well or the, the binding off but look considering how much knitting and how much time has gone into it we're nearly there so really looking forward to that and i will show it to you as soon as i have any more progress made on it um so what else have i got to show you in terms of works in progress i have um just started a new project actually i think that's my next one well before i go on to that i'm going to talk to you a little bit about just a tiny bit about my half and half triangles wrap so at the moment I've brought this out every so often because I'm not making a terrible huge amount of progress on it but every so often when I feel like it so it is getting gradually bigger this is Pearl Soho's linen quill in the colorway um oh I forget now I forget the name of the color but it is another really nice mindless project um but sometimes for me it's too mindless and that's why I think I've really enjoyed the sock knitting because there's a little bit of a challenge, but because now I decide I know what I'm doing in terms of not having to look at the pattern to knit the heels and the and the toes and stuff, um, 
I'm sometimes finding this shawl knitting, this particular pattern, which is great mindless knitting, but it's a little bit too, too mindless. And I've also decided to change out the colour that I'm matching this with. I'm going to be using fresh pickle because I have some of that left over. And my sister is at the same time knitting a, uh, another Pro Soho half and half. This is the half and half triangle drop, by the way, in case I didn't say that. Uh, it's been knit by so many people. It's a free pattern from Pro Soho and I highly recommend it. Especially as a starter project, it's you know if you're starting out knitting, and there's only you really only need to it's garter stitch, so it's knitting on both sides, back and forth, and the only uh, things are the um, to learn as a new skill might be um, the wrap and turn or the German short row, and also I'm putting on as most people are doing these days I think with this pattern, an eye cord edging, so. That's that and it is a really really lovely project but my sister is knitting one and she's knitting hers in kettle black and she didn't have enough of any other colour left over from her stash so I'm going to give her a um, some of mine which is in wheat flour and I was going to use wheat flour with this but I decided it'll be beautiful with the black uh, my sister thinks so as well and so she's looking forward to doing that so I'm going to use fresh pickle with the with the green so that's that project it's still tipping away but not really making very much progress but it is there if I'm ever stuck and have nothing else to do um, <laughs> which doesn't happen very often so I am going to show you now my latest work in progress I think um, uh, where is it I, I shouldn't even have to oh yes that's it I knew it I couldn't remember the name but even though I start, started this last night so I have cast on and I have this um, beautiful rib, not ribbed neck actually, there's no ribbing at the neck. So this is the neckline of the sides and stripes um, top, or I don't know what you call it, it's the long sleeved fingering weight top uh, or jumper by Vera Vanamaki. I absolutely adore Vera Vanamaki's designs. I've made a shawl by her, the Big Spite shawl. Uh, earlier on this year I think it was and I really really love her her stuff I'm always looking at her patterns thinking oh I'd love to knit that so this is uh, by way of using my um, uh, gorgeous linen merino from life in the long grass which was gifted to me by Caroline earlier this year and this also went into my Sozotna crop so you can see the green here is this color but uh, it was held double with Bisha Bush um, green, a green colour, I think it's called medium green. Bisha Bush Le Petit Mohair in green. So you can see that it's a much brighter green than this, which is called Grove. So this is called Grove. It's uh, got, I think, 90% merino, 10% linen around that. And it is flecked with these beautiful white flecks. So the, the character of this yarn was changed dramatically. And I, and I, I know that's true of all the beautiful life in the long grass that I used in my Sildotna crop, the character was changed by the um, silk mohairs that I used, but that's okay. That's what I was looking for at the same time. I was a little bit reticent, just thinking, oh, I'm losing the beautiful character. So I really wanted to do another top in this, and I have plenty of it left, although maybe not enough, not quite enough yarn, as they say, for, um, that's a great podcast, by the way, uh, Leslie, not quite enough yarn. I highly recommend it. I love watching her. Um, but yeah, so this, probably won't have enough. I have I have two and a half skeins. I literally only used a half a skein, I think, in, in this top of the green. So you use so much so little of each colour for the Saldotna. It's a great project. So I may need to buy another little bit of this, but I um I'm pairing it with this incredible colour, which actually was inspired by the same colour. So they are almost exactly the same. This is slightly brighter. But this beautiful green from Exmoor Sock inspired me when I was looking on the Life in the Long Grass website recently to buy this gorgeous colour. So this is called Chartreuse and it is um, Merino Singles. So I'm pairing the Merino Singles with the Linen Merino and the two of these are absolutely brilliant together. And this will be, I'll uh, put a photograph up, you can see it'll be a striped top. Um, stripes running across the, the body from about just below the yoke and running across the arms as well and I know that I love that idea of stripes that, that run across the body and the arms from several patterns that I've knit recently I just love the, that idea 
So, uh, including the downtown hoodie, that's what I was going to tell you about, the downtown hoodie with the stripes and the arms and the body. So these are my two beautiful Life of the Long Grass yarns that I'm so, so excited about. Uh, so excited about these and so excited about this project. So it's literally just started, just finished uh, the, um, just finished the, the neckline and I am starting to do the increases for the yoke. So it's a simple yoked sweater art top. Um, that is all of my uh, works in progress at the moment. As you can see, I don't have that many, but I do, uh, I am tempted to cast this on this evening, is a uh, another pair of socks and I am planning on using these three yarns for the pair of socks that I'm going to cast on, which is going to be another pair of Ovis, Ovis socks. So I've made a pair of Ovis socks already, but this time I'm going to To talk to you about the plans for future projects and one of those was a pair of socks knit with phenol PT2, phenol garn from Rama and this very special yarn vibes yarn and this is a, a company based in Cork in Ireland who are actually starting to or have been doing it for a while now and they are making yarn from fleeces from sheep that are reared in Ireland so it's a great initiative um, because we have so much wool in this country that doesn't get used and we import so much wool and it's absolutely brilliant to see a company that's making a big difference in that regard. So this is the sort of a rustic, beautiful rustic cream coloured sport weight wool. I bought some of this when I was in Cork recently uh, in Vibes and Scribes and it is, uh, it came as part of a mini skein set and I got greys and blues and white or cream and I also got green some greens as well and this is the third colour in the Ovis socks the black for the, sh the face uh, of the sheep and this is Old Centrum so Anthracite which I knit my downtown hoodie in which I absolutely adore I love I love Old Centrum of course anybody who knows me and who watches this podcast knows that I go on and on about Old Centrum it's just a beautiful yarn rustic gorgeous colours um, really long lasting lovely to wear so very good. So I'm looking forward to knitting a rustic pair of the Ova socks. Now the Ova socks are actually, um, the pattern calls for iron Astex iron band, which is an Icelandic wool, um, paired with a, um, uh, I forget the other wool, it's a, it's a paired with a lace weight, I think, or a fingering weight, uh, other wool, which I have in my notes. But anyway, I'm not pairing, I'm just doing a fingering weight version. From most rustic wool. And then very exciting, the uh, MCAL is coming up and these are my yarns. So this is what I'm going to be knitting with. Um, if anybody remembers a couple of months ago I featured these on the podcast and these are um, Life in the Long Grass Merino Singles in uh, five beautiful colorways that I picked up when I was buying um, replacement yarn for the silk mohair, the purple silk mohair in the Soldotna crop, I ran out of it. And I just, instead of going back to Pearl Soho uh, to get their tussock, I actually decided to much, go much closer to home to avoid all the customs charges and all of the shipping charges. And I went to Life in the Long Grass, where there's a facility to um, choose any base you want and any of the colours that they have, and they will dye it to order and they'll ship it to you within a week for nine euros worldwide shipping. They're an incredible company. Their yarn is beautiful and they do really good service as well. So I bought these just, I suppose, on spec. I really just felt like buying, I hadn't bought yarn for six months um, in the first half of this year and I really splashed out and I thought I really want some gorgeous colors. So I just indulged myself and I bought these five colors. And amazingly, the MCAL, I thought I might use them for the MCAL, but when I saw the advertising for that Stephen West has put out for the Life in the Long Grass sets, one of them in the centre of the video is very similar to these colours, with these autumn colours. And I thought, wow, that's incredible. It's like I predicted that this, it would be a gradient this year, a uh, geo gradient. And I'm not sure which one to leave out. I could do the, these four colours. I could do them like that. Or I could do them like that. Um, but I really feel tempted to include the silver and to leave out the Baroque. So this is called Baroque, this ready colour. And I'm tempted to do 
this type of a, um, a fade, or not fade, a gradient, um, using these colours. So I'm just going to read out to you what they are. I know this is gorse, I know this is terracotta, and I know this is fire clay, and I know this is baroque. So they could be the colours, or they could include this one, and I forget the name of this silver colour. I uh, have to look at the label. It's called Grace Lake. So, I mean, just look at them. And this is, you can see bits of brown in this that would go well with any of these colours. And they're my favourite autumn colours. So I am so excited and really, really looking forward to knitting with these beautiful, beautiful yarns. And looking forward to the MCAL again this year. And what I love most about the MCAL is the, um, I suppose the community aspect of it, that you really feel like you're participating and working alongside loads of other people who are doing the same thing. The video tutorials are fantastic. The, um, uh, it's just always a challenge as well to, you're always learning something new and uh, it just feels like so much fun. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. And I can't wait, it's only gonna start next week, so perfect timing. Um, and I have my yarn already in and ordered, and I'm absolutely thrilled with that. So there are my future plans, those two projects, and of course to continue on the works in progress. So I'm definitely going to continue on with that Fear of Animaki design, and I'm going to hopefully get around to finishing the, um, I'm going to do the Ova socks by the Petite Knitter, and I'm going to get around to finishing my decision cardigan, and I'll have the shawl and the needles, so that's actually plenty to keep me going. So. I just wanted to do, by way of a replacement for the section on um, on the Irish culture that I usually do and that I just felt this time I really uh, preferred to do something different and it, you know, in a way that was stopping me from podcasting because I thought oh, I have to prepare that and it's going to take a lot of time because it actually does take a fair bit of time to, to prepare and um, I thought no just fire ahead and move on with the knitting and really focus more on the knitting this time. and. So what I thought I would look at uh, are two things actually. One of them is a sock review of the socks that I've knit since the beginning of this year. And the second thing is my, my creative process and how that's been going over the last month or so. So with the socks, I thought I'd just do a quick run through and I thought I would look at them in terms of um, the yarns that I've used, how they've worn, uh, how they worked out in terms of gauge and the needle size and which ones I wear the most and which ones I really like and also I suppose just what I've learned through the year in terms of my preferences for the type of heel that I do whether it's toe, uh, toe up or, sock, or cuff down so these are the um leave that aside for the moment but this is the uh collection of socks that I've knit since the beginning of the year and actually I've just remembered I had to go out in between uh, during this podcast while filming to collect that cat that I said we were going to be rehoming. So we've rehomed a cat uh, that belonged to um, my friend Barbara who's relocating to Australia and uh, so she very sadly and emotionally had to say goodbye to her cat this afternoon and we collected the cat uh, whose name is Batman and um, so Barbara if you're watching this you can be rest assured that Batman is settling in already he's settling in well into the house so he's with me here in the living room as I'm filming and he's gone into hiding behind one of our um, pieces of furniture and he has everything that he needs in here including a lovely little um, sort of a cocoon type um, uh, little house that he he lives in most of the time uh, that usually hangs from a radiator but is now in a corner of our room where it it fits neatly and he he's out of the way and he's quiet so yeah so we have a new cat and in that time I put on my socks that I was wearing, that I was showing you earlier so one pair of socks is on my feet again and uh, I'm not going to take it off I don't think I might take them off and show you again but they were the medicine cats sock so um, what I was going to do is quickly go through briefly the, uh, the different types of socks that I've done and the issues that I've had with them. So starting from the beginning of the year, I did these ones and these are called finial and they are a free pattern as far as I can remember. I have my notes here. They're by a designer called Rachel McDaniel and they're a sport weight sock. And I thought I'd knit sport weight because I had this idea in my head that 
fingering weight takes forever. I've actually changed that idea now. I love fingering weight socks and partly because fingering weight are much easier to wear in shoes. Uh, sport weight are great for running around the house but trying to get them into a pair of shoes it's, it's almost impossible sometimes depending on the fit of the shoe but fingering weight really is the only way to go if you want to fit uh, a good pair of socks uh, to, to wear on, an, on a day-to-day -day basis. So that's what I learned from these and as you can see uh, the yarns I used were uh, there's a big hole in the heels so this happened very quickly it wasn't very long before the holes appeared in the heels and I'll tell you why that happened so the yarns I used were uh, Derer Natura Ulis and that is the um, gosh I forget the name of the colour anyway as you can see it's a sort of an oatmeal colour and this other yarn is uh, stuff that I had left in stash it's called uh, Jameson's of Shetland Spindrift and it is, a, I think it's a, um, a turf uh, colourway, I can't remember the colourway for that either, but I wouldn't recommend using it in sock unless you're holding it double with some sort of a, a silk mohair or something to strengthen it because it just wore away instantly. So pure wool and very lightweight, it doesn't last. But having said that, so is Elise. Um, Derem Natur is also uh, pure wool, 100% wool, and that wore much better, so it's a sturdier wool. So that's a lesson already. Sometimes 100% wool works and sometimes 100% wool doesn't work in socks. And it's really, I suppose, just a case of looking, is there a high twist on the so on the yarn? Um, is it recommended for socks or is it not? But as you can see, these just developed holes very quickly in the, the toes and the heels. So I haven't repaired them. They're a good pair of socks. I could still wear them. I love the, the pattern. So Rachel McDaniel, a free pattern on Ravelry. That was what they ended them in January. Then moving on, I knit the Ova socks shortly after that, sometime during the year. And this has um, what I was saying to you. This is uh, these are the ones that I'm going to re knit in uh, just using rustic the rustic yarns that I was telling you about there. The P uh, Phenol Garn, Rama Phenol Garn PT2, and the Yarn Vibes yarn. So these are um, designed by the Petite Knitter and um, it's a really beautiful pattern, absolutely love it and she recommends holding a silk mohair together with iron band. Now the silk mohair that I used was Rowan, Kid Silk Haze and the, the uh, instead of iron band I used a lace weight Galway wool from Cushendale Wooden Mills and um, with beautiful colours as you can see these coppery colours and these I thought would be really durable because of the fact that you're holding the um, you're using the silk mohair which is supposed to help but actually this has a hole very quickly got a hole in the the foot there so in the heel so unless I was to strengthen the heel somehow and that's the the underside of the heel it's not the back of the heel where you usually have the reinforcement it's the underside so I'm not sure what to do in terms of that apart from repairing it and uh, the rest of the sock because it seems to be really sturdy they're really cozy gorgeous socks to wear and they're very very cute so i really want to repair them and um as you can see i very rarely ever weave anything in so even though these were not woven in i was still wearing them so that's those um i'm going to knit another pair of them really looking forward to that and i might use a smaller needle that's the other thing with these they were too big I think either fewer stitches or a smaller needle um, for those. I think it was recommended a 2.75 millimeter needle, which is huge for uh, for the finial sock. I could easily have gone down to a 2.5 millimeter for that. And these ones I think recommended a 2.25 millimeter and I could have used a two millimeter for them, even though they're not huge. But uh, the third one then is uh, I knit both of these. I'll do the third one and I'll do these as the fourth. So these pair, these two pairs were both knit using the Socks Variations Shadow Wrap Heel pattern and they're both sort of self-drafted in terms of stripes that I just decided on the thickness, the width, width of the stripe and I decided on the colours and these are yarns uh, where I held a yarns, uh, fingering weight yarns held double with um, with silk mohair and this was just pure joy working on these and I've worn these to death so they are believe it or not completely intact no holes in the heels no holes in the toes and also believe it or not with these ones I didn't even reinforce the heels and the toes and the cuffs with the silk mohair 
So this yarn, this magic yarn that is uh, fingering weight is 90% uh, wool, 10% merino, 90% merino, 10% linen. It's the merlino from the Walk collection and it's the Goyaba colorway. So magic yarn, great for socks, doesn't fall apart. Look at that. I mean, I've worn these, as you can see, these are pretty worn, They're, they need to be washed actually. <laughs> But I wear these around the house. Um, they're a little bit on the big side for fitting into my, my socks or my shoes. So that's what well, these were again knit on a 2.25 millimeter needle. Um, I chose the 64 stitch uh, size. So I chose a size smaller than my own size, thinking that would compensate for the fact that there's silk mohair paired with the fingering weight. But actually, what's happened here is they're still a little bit too big. So I think I need to go down to a 2 millimeter needle and the smaller size to get a better fit. But having said that, they're not bad at all. Um, just to tell you what the yarns are, there is a, this is a, a variegated one from Volmet Ferva that I got in the Netherlands. This purple is um, a Malabrigo sock, and the pink then is the, is the Walk Collection Merlino. And I paired the three of them, so those three yarns, those three colors go down uh, the sock in threes and I paired them on the first three stripes I paired with the Rowan Kitsil Case and Cream in the second three um, stripes of those colours I paired with the Bisha Bush, the Petite Mohair Green and then this was the Pearl Soho Tussock um, in purple and this last one was back to the white again, back to the Kitsil Case. So as you can see that these three yarns are uh, continued down the, sh the socks. So there's only three different colour stripes but they're affected differently by what you're pairing them with and I got the idea really when I knit this about how you can influence the colour of the yarn so much by the, the colour of the mohair that you pair it with and you can get all sorts of great variations and tones and really good fun so it's like working with colour palette, working with paints and uh, so very successful. I knit a second pair of these and gave them to my sister and she loves them too. She's got a whole, that's the only thing, so she's going to be darning the heel but she's worn them I think probably a lot more than me but having said that I mean you know they're absolutely incredible that they have no mine have no holes in them yet uh, I'm amazed considering especially that that's just the merlino on its own so merlino is a good strong yarn for socks and these ones are in my favorite yarn of all time old centrum and they were knit in June for pride month and they're my rainbow socks for the rainbow cal the Irish rainbow cal and these also, this yarn is like, uh, it's just great. It's so strong. It's so strong, so durable. It felts as well, because it's a rustic yarn and you can see the bottom of the sock there felting a little bit um, with the the um, the, the moisture from, from your feet and um, and the heat. But look at how well they have, have worn. That's the, that's the sole of the, of the sock. And that's the heel there. So this is the shadow wrap heel. So this is this is what I'm talking about when I say that I now knit a sock without looking at a pattern. Uh, these are shadow wrap heels. Oh yeah, I should have said, sorry, I nearly forgot to tell you that I did do a different heel type in the Ova socks. This is an int not an integrated heel, it's a afterthought heel. And so basically what you do is you knit the whole sock down in a tube and then you come back and you cut you cut this, so this is actually, that's what it looks like to begin with. You're knitting it down in a tube and over this, the back of the sock here, you basically have a, um, you have a row of stitches that you cut and then you pick up the stitches on either side and you knit these, um, um, you, you knit into with, with decreases. It's a bit like a toe, I think. I think that's like a toe. It's the same as knitting that uh, with decreases. Um, so yeah, so that's an afterthought heel, which is a really cool idea and worked very, very well and I wouldn't have any problems doing an afterthought heel again. I found it quite easy. Um, I love my, I love the look of the shadow wrap. Very, very subtle. You can hardly see where the, the wraps are there, especially seeing as this, this has been worn so much now and has felt a little bit. But again, these are quite big as you can see and I should have used a much smaller needle even though I did use 64 stitches um, and um, they're still too big in spite of that being for the smaller size, smaller than my foot. 
Then we come to these amazing ones, of course. These are the Stephen West Surprise Sock Along that happened in July. And um, this has one of these heel flap and gusset arrangements, which I try to avoid. But because I was following Stephen West, it's all very clearly set out in the pattern. And I absolutely adore the way he's done this reinforcement at the back of the heel. I haven't worn these very much. They are made of Malabrigo sock, that aubergine colorway that I picked up in Amsterdam. That also appears in this has the, the aubergine Malabri malabrigo sock as well and um, this also has the the walk collection so the pink in this is the same pink in this it's the merlino walk collection so it's really durable and the sock the malabrigo sock is really durable so both of these are very durable but i ran out of the um i ran out of the the pink and you can just about see a change in tone there so this is a different pink it's from um proud soho it's their linen quill, um, which I made a half and half wrap out of, which Ruben now uses as a black. <coughs> Hi again everyone. I was just finishing up telling you about my socks there. Uh, we were looking at these with the last pair I had shown you. Um, the fabulous um, mystery knit along, sock along, surprise sock along from July at Stephen West. And um, <coughs> these are a great pair of socks, really durable yarn. And I think that the size is perfect because it's colour work. Um, and I just use a two, used a 2.25mm for these as well in a size uh, with 72 stitches, which is from my size foot. And finally, these ones that I spoke to you about earlier, these are my latest adventure into sock knitting and a new type of heel, the integrated heel and um, new type of yarn and um, ribbing and uh, so a whole new adventure in sock knitting that I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed. I really love knitting these socks and I feel like I've got to the point now where I can knit a pair of socks without thinking about it and it's a pleasurable thing to do and I can pick it up anywhere, I can carry it with me, it can come with me anywhere. So. Um, I'm just, I feel like I've advanced from, or not advanced, but at least I've learned a lot over the year from um, just experimenting with all these different types of yarn and different types of sock pattern. And, uh, and there are loads of free patterns out there. So this is an amazing one. This one is free. This is, I think I told you already, uh, um, Mona Made, I think is the name of the designer. Uh, free pattern, gorgeous yarn. You can use any yarn with this. So. There, my, uh, that's my sock knitting. Oh yeah, the other pair that I'm not gonna show you is the pair that I have on me, um, <coughs> which you've seen earlier there, the Simpler Sinister Sock Pattern by Ankatin Bjog, um, Marna Gilligan. So uh, that's it for the review of the socks. I hope that some of that information was useful to you and that you're encouraged, if you haven't knit socks before, to think of knitting a pair. Um, I think it's definitely worth it. They're really enjoyable and they are just a lovely small project that if you're feeling overwhelmed by life in general, knitting a small thing like that is really nice um, and really contained. And I really advise fingering weight yarn, even though it takes longer, it's definitely easier to wear, um, <coughs> certainly to fit inside shoes. So, um that's it the what the next little section that i'm going to do with you is my creative process and i this is a sort of a a new venture for me thinking of i suppose different content that i think you might be interested in hearing about and moving away a little bit from the um preparation heavy side of things for the, the cultural content which irish cultural content which i will come back to again i haven't given up on it totally but I suppose just a change for me is as good as a rest at the moment and I really was inspired to just write a little few notes about um, how I've found my creative process going over the month of, um, <coughs> excuse me, the month of September particularly, which was very busy and where I found busy with, with life, things going on and happening and work being um, a bit mad and crazy and uh, all good, but a lot happening at the same time. And uh, I really found that my creative process was grinding to a halt, that I was finding it very difficult to decide on what I wanted to knit and to have the concentration to come up with a project that I was really interested in. And I have so much beautiful yarn that I really wanted to use it and I keep looking at it thinking, oh, I wish, and there's so many patterns that I have already bought 
and other patterns that I've saved as favourites <coughs> and I'm thinking why can't I decide on something? So it's, it's, uh, I think it's hard when that happens when your brain, your, the creative side of your brain shuts down because partially because you just don't have enough enough space for uh, enough time to to sit with your ideas and uh, to let things evolve because they always have to evolve they can't you can't force them if they're not coming then you just can't force them um, and that's something that I just I have learned I suppose over the course of really over the course of the few years that I've been knitting seriously is that you can't force anything um, and you have to follow your instincts and if you don't like something you have to stop and not knit the whole thing and then still not like it <laughs> Think you've sort of just got to really listen to your heart when you're knitting or when you're doing anything but anything creative <clears throat> but i just wrote down a few pointers which i thought might be interesting just of interest to you um, and they are i suppose just um for the first thing that i did differently this time uh, or at least recently is i got a new display cabinet for my yarn and now i can see it all that's made a huge difference so all my yarn is now on display. It's moved into a dresser with glass doors and that's made a huge difference to me. I don't have it behind me because it's too high up to be part of the podcast but hopefully one day I'll do it in a video and you can see it. So that's really opened up the gates of inspiration because I can see it all at the same time and I can look in and see. Another thing I thought I might do is put together a spreadsheet but that's a little bit less sort of tactile or less uh, visual. Uh, I think just looking at the colours and looking at the textures and looking at the weights, the yarn weights right in front of you behind glass doors. If you have a way to display your yarn like that safely without it being exposed to, to moths, it's really brilliant for, for the creative process, for getting things moving and starting to think about what you might do with your yarn. The other thing I did recently is I bought two new skeins of yarn and they were randomly bought and they were bought just purely out of the love for the colours of the skeins and they were the uh, the one you've seen already which is now being incorporated into my new Vera Valamaki uh, sweater design. This is Life in the Long Grass um, Merino, um, Merino Singles in the Chartreuse colourway and um, so this inspired that, that design. That's where that came from. That's where my idea eventually got to. I haven't gone through a whole lot of other ideas before that. And this other fantastic uh, yarn that I couldn't leave behind at the shop, um, I also bought this from Life of the Long Grass. It's a sock yarn, uh, 75, 25, and I've been avoiding buying yarns with 25% nylon in them. Um, but I couldn't, I couldn't avoid this. And I've got so into knitting socks and I'm finding that you don't always need, obviously you don't always need nylon. There are many sock yarns, there are many yarns out there that aren't sock yarns that are really good, like Old Centrum really works, as I've as I've not, noticed. Um, the Merlino, 90% Merino, 10% linen really works in the, particularly in the the wool collection version of that. Um, yeah, so there are yarns there that are good. The Old Centrum, the Uli, uh, sorry, the Urmanatura release works. Um, but anyhow, I decided I am not going to shy away from um, yarns with an nylon content in them. And this is a yarn that, that I picked up purely for the love of the colour. So that is pure inspiration and so was this. So at the moment this is still waiting to become something, but this has already worked its way into a project that I'm absolutely definitely, uh, that I'm completely passionate about knitting. And this is what happens sometimes I start a project and I'm thinking I'm not really passionate about this and I really, do I really 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 want to knit this because there's so much time that goes into it you have to really want to knit the thing. Um, I'm sure this is like stuff that you're all really from your own experience familiar with but I just love the idea of sharing it with you and seeing what your feedback is if you have any comments or if you feel the same way about the, the creative process it'd be great to hear back from you. So that's the second thing so first thing I have my yarn on display second thing I allowed myself to, uh, I suppose, uh, I allowed myself to buy a few skeins that purely on the basis of the fact that I really love them and they're not for anything in particular and they're not to make up a deficit or whatever for a project. Um, swatching, I, um, I've i always loved swatching and um, it really helps me, especially with colour work projects, to figure out where I'm going. Um, I thought I might, the other night I thought I might actually knit on the second Soldatna because I loved it so much. And I started using these, they were my yarn vibes yarns, my old centrums, my uh, phenol garn, rama. And there are some ideas just for how I might combine the colours. And 
I got to the end of this swatch and I didn't like it. And I didn't like any of the, the ideas that were coming out of it. And before I would have said to myself, why did I waste an evening or, you know, part of an evening knitting a swatch that I really don't like the results of. And actually what I have learned through looking at um, the Green Bean uh, podcast, I forget her name, I'm really sorry, I'll give you the notes below, but I watched her, she does a lot of sketching and drawing and she does all sorts of different crafts and knitting and but she's an illustrator and uh, her illustrations are beautiful and she sells patterns that are beautifully illustrated and she makes colour work patterns uh, based on her illustrations. And her stuff is just really stunning, I love it. But what I, I watched her doing a programme or a podcast episode on um, how she works through her designs for illustration and how she, so the point she made is that she actually will keep drawing even if she thinks that the designs aren't going to make it to the finished product but she says she has to work through these drawings and these designs and these illustrations that aren't perfect and she knows aren't going to work because just to get the, her creative flow moving and I realised that's exactly what's happening when I'm knitting a swatch like this, I don't have to like the finished product but it starts to tell me how colours work together, what what I really want out of the yarns that I have. And by trying to combine different colours um, and find that they don't work in a swatch, it moves me to look at different combinations of, of other yarns. And that's how I eventually came to using, to looking at using uh, this beautiful um, Grove colourway with the uh, Chartreuse. I was thinking of a Soldatna with these two in it and I was trying to match them because there are four colours to match up in a Soldatna it gets really complicated and your head can get a bit fried but I, um, in the end I actually picked these two out just as colours to go on their own I decided that's what I really love I really love them and I really want them on their own and I really want them together in a project and I have a fair bit of this and I have one of these and if I could find a project that would work and instantly in my favourites I came across the Vera Vanamaki design and I thought wow that's really gorgeous I'm, I'm happy with that. So it was a process of working through working through swatches. This is another swatch that I did the previous night for the Babel hat. Um, getting the gauge right in that hat as everybody knows is a um, it's a bit tricky it's it, it, it tends to be I think the gauge is written in a funny way, I'm not saying that it's wrong, or, um, but it, it turns out a lot of people have knit the hat and it's too big and so it's just being careful to get the correct gauge. I think the gauge that's written is right, I think it's maybe difficult to get that gauge with Aran weight wool, I think it's 23 stitches or something, and it's Aran wool, Aran weight, and usually, I mean, I would normally, with, with a 4mm needle or something, and I would normally get like 18 stitches instead of with a four millimeter needle with a with iron weight wool. So I think it's going, it's getting the right gauge. Um, and I was just experimenting with that and um, didn't like it the night I knit it. Came back to it a few days later and said, oh, I really like that. I think I might actually knit it. So, so it's often dependent as well on your mood. And if you're tired, you might like a swatch that you've knit. But swatching, um, yeah, I just really loved uh, the green beans take on the need to go through um you know experimental knitting or experimental whatever sketching um to see where you're going to come out with it at the end of the day and um that that was so inspirational for me and i just thought i'd pass it on to you as a way of thinking about and that actually it's not a waste of time swatch swatching just randomly you know not necessarily for any particular project either just seeing how colors work together and seeing how textures and different weights and all of that work together um, and sometimes I'm, I'm too impatient to do it but I found I was so stuck this recent few weeks that that was the only thing I could really do to move myself forward onto, um, onto a new project and I found that this new project is something I really really want to knit so that's important. So four, number four then would be getting uh, using what you have in your stash already and that gives me huge pleasure so both yarns and patterns so even though I didn't hadn't bought the Vera Vanamaki pattern it was in my favourites and I knew I would probably buy it at some stage and it gives me huge pleasure to be able to use this yarn in particular which isn't an easy colour to uh, use in a project. I thought of knitting a shawl with it but it's quite a subdued it's 
Um, when I look at it now, in this light, it's almost gold. You can see a sort of a, there's a yellow tinge to it, and that's probably why it works well with the yellow in the chartreuse. Um, but it's a really muddy green and hard to bring it, hard to make it sing, and hard to make it, hard to make it um, into something a project that I really want to um, showcase the yarn with, uh, because I know when I knit this. So Dachna, this yarn wasn't, it, it was It was hidden, It's this colour is hidden by my choice of uh, to double it with the with the Biche Bouche uh, green. So that's just food for thought anyway, but I had th nearly three, three skeins of it and I really wanted to do something. So it's a huge pleasure to finally focus on that and to realise through doing these swatches, no, that's actually what I want to knit with. And I found a random ball of yarn that I bought that I was inspired to buy. Um, has come in handy and pairs up really well with that. Um, so ending up knitting or deciding on a pattern that's completely different to the one that I started swatching for. So I'm not going to do the Sol Dotten anymore, I'm going to do the Vera Valimaki and that's great. I love how that happens, how you move through, once you move, once you start working with with sketching and swatching, you move through the ideas. Um, don't be restricted, then another point, number four, don't be, number five, don't be restricted by the amount of any one type of yarn you have. You probably always need to buy a ball, an extra ball anyway. Like sometimes I look at a pattern and I say, oh no, I've only got five skeins of that and I need six. And I just move on and I look for another pattern and I wreck my head trying to fit, squeeze it in, squeeze the yarn I have into the patterns that are there. And actually, do you know, just I just now just knit and um, if I don't have enough of the right colour sometimes and I don't have colour as long as you've got the weight right, as long as you've got the texture right um, and if it comes to it at the end of the day I might even go out and buy another ball. I mean sometimes you have to, like with my decision cardigan, I absolutely have to buy a ball of the same colour but there are projects that you can possibly get away with without doing that so just start anyway, I think to start the project, get, get the ball rolling and get moving. And uh, number six then, trust your instincts. So only start a project when your heart starts to sing. So that was me the other night. I felt, oh, finally, this is exactly what I want to do. I feel really enthusiastic about this. And also just you're, you're lifted up and you, uh, you're carried along by this absolutely beautiful idea. And it, it, it's what is the, that is one of the big pleasures of knitting for me. Uh, otherwise it would be a chore. And sometimes it is a chore when you're in the middle of a project and you're thinking, there's an awful lot of work in this, but always when you sit back and look at the colours and look at the, the, the yarns you've chosen and how they work together. So when it makes your heart sing, that's when it's time to, to do it. Um, and uh, yeah, keep swatching until that happens, I reckon. Number seven, don't be afraid to frog a project which has stalled to, um, in order to reclaim the yarn that you really want to use. So that's what happened with this yarn. I had actually started another project. I don't know if you remember from my last podcast, I was doing a ribbed um, sort of a sleeveless top, a summer top, and um, it wasn't doing anything for me anyway. And it had, and you know, you know when it's not doing anything for you because it's sort of languishing at the bottom of a bag somewhere and you're going through. And that actually, that was another thing that happened when I was taking my yarn out to put it in the cabin, cabinet, the new cabinet that I got, I realized I had this project, I'd forgotten about it, you know? So just lifting everything out, seeing what you've got, and you realise the reason it's there is because it's not doing anything for me. So reclaiming the yarn, frogging a project, makes you feel fantastic. That was another another way of getting everything to move and getting everything to flow. And um, that's pretty much that number seven is my seventh uh, piece of advice on, or at least my experience, I'm not advising anybody to do anything, uh, it's my experience on uh, my creative process and how, uh, how to get that flowing and how to get it moving and how wonderful it is when you've gone through the process and you've found what you want to do. And it takes time. Like this Sildotna crop, which I absolutely adore the combination of colours in and the combination of yarns, it took me, I'd say, three or four weeks of going into the room, putting the yarns together in a certain combination, walking out again, leaving them for a day, coming back, moving them around, looking, taking them back out, looking at them again, and really then finally deciding on a combination. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a slow process. Creative process won't be rushed and can't be hurried and can't be forced. And I think that's why it's such an antidote to the world that we're in where everything has to happen now and there are deadlines for work and everything has a time and we're all at the, 
early in the morning and um, to, to get on with the schedule of the day to get things done and it's about getting things done because we're earning a living and that's what we've got to do but the creative process that we do with our knitting is pure joy and pure antidote and we remember then we remember that life is really all about that it's all about giving ourselves the time and that's it so it's a pleasure to have been with you today again really really enjoyed being here and i hope you have too and i hope that if you like the content of the video um that you'll consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and i hope and clicking the like button and oh, the other thing is to click the notification bell because i know that I have lost contact with some of the podcasters that I used to watch because I haven't clicked the notifications and I forget about them. And even though I love them, they're off there in somewhere in the in the ether making their videos and I'm missing them. So don't forget to press the notification bell if you want to see these podcasts again and uh, leave a comment. Let me know about your creative process, how you work through your knitting ideas and um, and your yarn usage and uh, yeah and let me know if you have any ideas on sock knitting. Hi everyone I just got cut off there before the end of the podcast and I just wanted to say once more thank you so much for joining me today and being with me I've really enjoyed it and um, in terms of the Irish cultural content I was going to include in every podcast a, um, a lovely Irish saying or phrase known in Irish as a shanukal uh, or a proverb and I will do that now um, and I'll do it in every podcast subsequently to this. I had forgotten to keep keep including them but today's one is possibly one I've used before so you'll have to forgive me but it's no harm to have it repeated um, just for hearing the beautiful language, for learning and for a love of, of the Irish language. So this one is called, is a phrase that goes Tusma la nehibra, Tusma la nehibra and this means a good beginning is half the work. Uh, so it's a lovely Irish phrase. Um, they're fantastic sayings. We say we, we would use these not in everyday speech in Irish, but we have the essence of them in, um, in, in our use of, of the English language. So um, it's really lovely to, to be able to share them with you. And uh, so until the next time, please uh, like, this, like and subscribe to the channel. If you like the content, and uh, please leave a comment below. And I'm so looking forward to seeing you again in hopefully less than a month's time. And by that time, we will have finished the Stephen West MCAL. So for those of you who are taking part, really enjoy it. And uh, I'm looking forward to knitting along with you all. And uh, I'm looking forward to talking about your finished project to the end of October. Um, so we'll see you then. Take care. Um, I hope you're all stay well for the next month and um, happy knitting and happy making. Talk to you soon. Bye now. Don't be a stranger in the night Take a chance for some romance Don't cover your eyes We'll love trees Know you better than anyone else It's time you let your guard down For someone like me I'd say I'm settled I don't storm in the storm If not me, then someone like me That knows what to do and how to take care of you But most of all, that deserves you Stop it.
that he deserves you That he deserves you Go with someone like me